So, Lon, thanks so much for taking the time to chat. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Lon Mulnar. I'm co-president uh, of Mars, Monsters, Aliens, Robots, Zombies, and uh, we're located here in Toronto, Canada. I thought just initially uh, it might be interesting just knowing that last time we spoke, I think, was end of 2019, and some things have happened since then, um, mainly the pandemic. I, I figured it might be something to talk a little bit about just in terms of what it was like going through that period. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, tragedy that happened throughout the pandemic, but specifically around Mars, like for you guys knowing that filming was shut down for a period of time, what was it like for you guys going through that time? Was it a bit scary, concerning, or did things stay relatively uh, streamlined? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, when, when, whenever you're in a position where you can't kind of help predict and prepare for future, uh, it's always uh, a little scary, you know, what's, what's going to happen. It's almost like a, uh, a trauma victim in that way, um, where it was, it was like that day to day. Um, there were a few silver linings, uh, one of them being, you know, I think uh, the VFX industry as a whole has kind of solved work-life balance, uh, which has always been the, uh, the the holy grail, I'd say, uh, of, of any artist in the industry of, who has relationships uh, outside of industry and trying to convince the significant other that, no, no, life will be better, I promise. Uh, this, this allowed you to do that and allowed you to uh, to spend more time with your family and maybe, you know, bring them to school in the morning or have breakfast with them or lunch or whatnot. So that was a silver lining through all of it, which is, I'd say, you know, the, the, the big silver lining and uh, much gratitude for that. Um, but, you know, trying to prepare for it, uh, we had very little notice. We were, we basically were given about a 36 hour notice from uh, the premier of Ontario that we had to be out of office and uh, work from home if we were to survive as a, as a company. Uh, so very rapidly, that's exactly what we what we did, um, which is which was interesting, <laughs> to say the least. I guess I can get into a little bit more. So you know, it's it, it, essentially everybody's on remote. Uh, everybody's you know wondering what's going to happen uh, will there ever be a return to the office if so what's it going to look like uh, for us you know we were also just getting ready to renovate a new facility and move into a new facility so we signed a lease we were in that uh, area where you know what's this facility going to look like you know fortunately we we had the foresight without knowing that a pandemic would be the actual uh a thing that was going to take place to to put a lot more network drops in. So I think we had a couple net, network drops at every station, uh, and that allowed us to scale. And that was the other thing through the pandemic is you know there were a lot of businesses that uh, were hit hard and you know had to close. And we were very fortunate and very grateful to be in an industry that just exploded. So we went from about I think about 80 people at the beginning of the pandemic to almost 300 uh, throughout it. So, and you know, more than half our lifetime as a, as a, as a business was remote. Uh, so it was, it was interesting to say the least. Yeah, I'm, I was talking with a lot of people at ILM and Pixar right as everything was happening. And that was one thing for them. There was a bit of a stutter for a week, but then everyone just magically had their computers arrive via FedEx and then it was business as usual. So, I mean, it's it's gonna be interesting. One of the, the positive things that I was excited about was the fact that people being able to work remote, it is, as you were mentioning, you can kind of pick your hours a bit more, you can be a bit more flexible, but it also means that you're not necessarily needing to be in that specific bubble. Toronto can be a bit of an expensive city, um, New York, LA, London, Vancouver, so San Francisco. So in a lot of ways, like not necessarily having to live in an expensive city or even be able to tap into international talent that usually wouldn't have the privilege. Me coming from Australia back in the day when VFX was still not really a, a mainstream word, that was one of the, the things is I couldn't work on a Hollywood film back then because uh, I'd need to get a work visa and move to the States. You know, in a lot of ways, like knowing that now you have access to some of the top talent around the world, um, has that kind of played in your favor as well? Not not being kind of tied down to just your local talent necessarily. We have a lot in common in, in, in that way. Like I came from a small town in Northern Ontario where the opportunity to do what we're doing today just wasn't there, it didn't exist. So if you wanted to do it, you're packing up and you're leaving and you're going to the big city. So that's exactly what I did. I went from Northern Ontario to Vancouver to, to get the skills and to get into the industry essentially. Uh, and then there to Toronto and, and I was outside of the Toronto when I started having a family and commuting in. And you know, for an artist to have to spend your first hour, hour and a half 
staff every day in traffic and under the stress and then suddenly you're you're behind a computer and you're you have to get into an artistic mode it's just not optimal right like i've always envisioned the artist being <clears throat> an artist being in their optimal mode for me it would be like i want to be on a lake i want to get up in the morning i want to have that sunset over the lake and and a nice cup of coffee or a latte whatever and then suddenly you're you're in that mode you're working yourself into that mode and then you're at that optimal level as an artist so you can be as creative as possible not the stresses of of fighting traffic and whatnot and at the end of the day what do you have to look forward to fighting traffic to get home right or you're doing long hours because you're working on that one last thing that you're trying to get every ounce of uh, uh of creative into so you're spending you know into the wee hours to do it because you can't necessarily go home and then come back into the office or, where what this has done is it allowed us to to kind of like find that optimal uh place like there's people all over the world that uh, that are in their place now uh, I've actually returned uh, back to my my hometown where my family is because I've seen the opportunity after a few months that this isn't going away anytime soon. And it's, uh, as many others, uh, it's a massive disruption, but hey, how can I turn this into an advantage for myself? Um, and we clearly, we, we basically, you know, mandated that we're not gonna force everyone to come back. And as a matter of fact, you know, this was an opportunity for the company to acquire the best talent in the world. And, you know, we, we see ourselves as a, uh, a talent acquisition company as well. We want the best talent, no matter where they are. We weren't going to let, you know, uh, regional tax credits kind of get in the way of that or where anyone was, let's just acquire great talent. Because with great talent means, you know, we're going to have the optimal creative. We want to be the best in the world. We need to open ourselves up to be, um, being able to acquire that talent and to give them that flexibility. I know what it's like to be an artist. I'm one and it's like, it's not fun being in the situation that I was in. And I, you know, I ended up commuting for like, I think 17 years and never thought that would ever happen. It's just not optimal. So how can we keep them in their place, their most optimal place to be creative and, uh, you know, tap into that essentially. I love that. 